speaking of those giants, you've mentioned in other interviews that um, Alfie Allen played Theon and Kate Harrington played John, uh, reached out to you, um, gave you some advice. Is there anything that you can share with us about what they told you about what this experience would be like? Um, well, I, I just re I recently worked with Alfie on a different project, and um, it was around the time that I uh, was allowed to start telling people that yeah, I was playing Aegon, and um, he he was just like he was just saying enjoy it, just don't, just get us get swept away with the process because it's such a huge machine, and you are for something this big, you are given an amazing amount of creative control and. Um, and for, you know you can really come away from work feeling fulfilled and like you've you know had a had a real impact on on the story you know as an actor and you, sometimes you know with things as big as this you can kind of get swept under the carpet and sort of be told what to do but this is this is such a creative collaborative process between actors and creatives themselves take us into that what is that like in a on the day you're on set you're, you're building out this character you're trying to find different emotional beats how does that collaboration work between you, the rest of the cast, Miguel, etc.? Um, well, I think you know it's down to Kate Rhodes James, who's the uh, casting director, the amazing casting director for House of the Dragon. She has um, expertly put a bunch of actors together who just meld so well, and who really want to work and to invest themselves and um, really dedicate themselves to to these characters and the story. You know, so everyone's on the same page. There's, there's nobody who just wants to turn up, do it, and go home. You know, everyone's so immersed in it. So to build the characters together is a, is a, is a dream, really, for, a, for any actor to be a part of. Um, it's a really, like I said, it's a really collaborative and um, fulfilling experience. Uh, what do you, what do you think, Aegon is? It, uh, <laughs> what are you looking forward? In season two for Aegon, is there any particular uh, not an event? I know we can't we can't spoil it, although I'm sure book readers have an inkling of the things that might be coming. But what what are you looking forward uh, for him? Um, I'm I'm just I'm looking forward to having Aegon have a lot more meat to get his teeth stuck into and to to, to cause more havoc, really, um, and just throw. A spanner in the works as he as he does so well. So yeah, that I guess. Who do you it, it, of the of the characters currently currently going in the show? <laughs> is there any one of them that you think would actually be a good ruler? <laughs> no. Alfie, uh, 
SAS Row Heroes and Epics. It's quite good. If anybody wants to watch, it's quite good. I shouldn't plug it on the show. Um, uh, this is a this is a, a show and a, a story with so many like iconic props, whether it's the throne, the various swords. Is there any one in particular that, that struck you that's like you got it in your hand or you got next to it and you're like, oh that's pretty cool. I'd like to steal that. Black file. Yeah, I'll, I'll steal that. <laughs> so it's just quite big to steal, though. <laughs> so I might have to take the double. Because there's, there's two. There's one that's like a, it's kind of like a heavy rubber version for when we're throwing it about and you know actually using it in combat. And there's a big steel, crazy. How they've made it is amazing. It's like steel wrapped into steel, which oh, wow. looks like the Valerian starts stunning. Um, so yeah, I'll take one of them. What, what was that moment like when you got to raise Blackfire overhead at, at Aegon's crowning uh, in the Dragon Pit? Um, yeah, I, mean, I think that was the most surreal part of the experience. Um, the whole coronation was was mind blowing. Um, any any fear that you see on my face as Aegon is all real. <laughs> um, there was absolutely no acting required in that stage as well. Uh, yeah, it was, it was bonkers. Really crazy. If, if you yourself, Tom, became king of Westeros, your first program would be, what is the first things that, that you implement as the new ruler? Um, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, possibly. That might be number three. Um, I think it would be, I, I, yeah, I think I'd rescue all the stray dogs. Oh, wonderful. Bring, bring that in. Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it, tell us about the, uh, you, you mentioned some of the, the, the VFX and interacting with that. What's it like to, you know, uh, obviously the dragons aren't real. Spoiler for, uh, for those of us who didn't uh, know, but. They are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen them. They are. They are real. Uh, what's it like interacting with stuff uh, in that manner? Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's interesting, it's a challenge, it's, you've got to use your imagination, but equally, you've got that many different things around you. So, for example, the scene at the end of um, episode 9, where Olivia and myself are stood being breathed on by this huge dragon. You know, we're, we're staring at a big tennis ball on a stick. <laughs> Some poor guy is sort of like waving it like this. <laughs> You know, and we're just looking at this for eye line, but then there's two guys on cranes either side with these huge industrial wind machines that are just blowing your face off. Um, so, you know, with all the wind and the, the sound effects, the roaring, and you know, people really getting into it, that, oh, it's great, it's great, I love it. It's like being a child, it's just sort of imagining and sort of bringing the story to life, and I've just never grown up, so. Um, I asked you backstage, but uh, we're doing the Young Kings panel tomorrow at 11 a.m., which is exactly at the same time as England, France, and the World Cup. What should we do? What do we do? I think instead of having me on these screens, <laughs> we have the England match on. And, you know, we can still talk and do everything. <laughs> it's way more interesting than my face. So. Um, shall we go to audience questions? Uh, we have a mic uh, over here on the side. And... If any of you all have some questions for the latest and most recent ruler of Westeros, go ahead and uh, step over there to the mic on the side stage and line up over there. No spoilers, please. I'm going to try. Is that to me or then? No, it's a step over there. <laughs> any of the, uh, the YouTubers and stuff that break down the episodes and analyze the characters and all that. No. What do you feel about that? I've, no, I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> no, should I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're, it's, it's really interesting. I got lots to say about you, so yeah. You might want to show. I'm sure they do. Okay, I'll be sure to do that. Nice to meet you, Dylan. Hello there. I'm sorry. Hi. Um, 
Carrot in Game of Thrones, who would you be and why Joffrey? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and why Joffrey? So there's a lot of silence and there's a lot of sort of contemplating stuff and um, yeah, I, I probably could be better at separating the two things in my head, just my own sense of mental health. Um, but uh, you, yeah, you yeah, kind of really have to go there and and then push yourself to the boundaries you feel safe pushing yourself to. Um, but yeah, it's always a process. The process is constantly changing and evolving and hopefully improving.
characters around the table that just everyone had their moment and it was just such a special thing to be a part of. Um, and then Egon goes and ruins it. So, um, but yeah, I think that was my favourite scene to shoot. Nice to meet you. Hi, my name is Richard. I just had a question. So when you first found out that you are going to be on Game of Thrones, how did you tell your family and your friends? I mean, what was that like? Um, I, I, well, I was one to secrecy for a long time. Um, so it was, I just kept it all in my head for a, for a long, long time. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I start, I'd start to tell people, wow, like six months into knowing. Um, and I don't really know how I did it. I think I just said I've got a job that's going to be quite exciting. And um, my, my dad's a big Game of Thrones fan, so he, he took it very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's, no, it's cool. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hey, Tom, my name is Mike. Uh, I have a question for you guys. As actors, obviously the whole greens versus blacks, when you're at that banquet scene, how does that dynamic set in? I'm sure you guys get on well, but I imagine prepping before that scene, what's that dynamic like for, for you, all of you guys? Yeah, it's a good question. I think that's what makes that scene so electric as well, is that there's that undercurrent of subtextual hatred <laughs> underneath it all, you know? and. Even though there are, you know, and having to be civil for the sake of the family, and although some people take notice of that, some others don't. Um, there's, def yeah, there's definitely an undercurrent there. But you know, us as actors, I think we respect each other in the way that we take this process. And for scenes like that where it's so um, visceral and so obvious, it's the elephant in the room. We kind of keep separate. The greens and the blacks keep separate for as long as they can, and then as soon as action's called, we're in it, and that's the first time we make eye contact, and then it just makes it more exciting. Hi. Hey. Hi, Kyle. Hey. How are you? My name is Patricia Garcia. Uh, you are my king, Papi Chulo. <laughs>
have for sale Jamie Lannister, uh, Joffrey Baratheon, Bran Stark, and Daenerys Targaryen. The special edition. How much is that? Uh, Daenerys is one seventy. Uh, these are sold separately. Oh, He's just hanging cool. out. The dragon is for sale. Uh, no, he sold out several years ago. Uh, his SRP was fourteen ninety nine. Me too. We were supposed to have more stock, but it didn't make it. short Amelia Clark is in Thugs and Hobbs.